What is up, Tar Heel fans? For Inside Carolina, I'm Taylor Vipolis. And North Carolina, for the fourth straight game, overcomes a second-half deficit to pull through on the road, beating Wake Forest 36-34, to moving the team to 9-1 and on the season and clinching their spot in the ACC championship, setting up a fun date December 3rd against the Clemson Tigers. On this episode of What More Can I Say, we've got a Tar Heel great joining the podcast and Algie Crumpler to help break down the weight game with me. But before we get to him, we're going to play a little game. I'll get a prompt, and I'll have to say whether the statement is essentially true or false, except this is Vipaliz or Vipalizen. Drake may further prove why he should be the Heisman. Vipaliz, this is an easy one. You're just not watching the games if you don't think Drake May is the most deserving player currently of the Heisman Trophy. Drake May leads the FBS in total yards per game at 399.6 yards. That's over 70 yards more than Tennessee's Hendon Hooker and 116 more yards per game than the current favorite CJ Stroud from Ohio State. He's tied for the lead with the most total touchdowns at 39 with Bo Nix from Oregon. He's got the best quarterback grade on pro football focus, and he's carrying this UNC team along with him to a top 10 ranking. There's no coasting or stat padding in his numbers where it's been Carolina needing every inch of his production to get wins. He doesn't have the luxury that CJ Stroud has where his teams go into games favored by 40 points. How dare people say that May hasn't played anybody when C.J. Stroud has played in six games where his team was favored by 27 points or more. This Saturday against a 3-6 and six Indiana team, Stroud had a second-half touchdown pass that made it 35-7, to seven, another touchdown pass that made it 42-7, to seven, and a touchdown pass that made it 56-14. to 14. There's nothing high leverage about that in comparison to May, whose team is living and dying with each pass that he makes. Ohio State's total defense is ranked seventh in the country. Carolina is 124th. May is dragging that defense and this team to his level. He's the best player in the country, and there isn't a player in the country more responsible for their team's success than May. It's really not even close. Josh Downs returns next year. This is Vipal, is it? I just don't see how he hasn't already proven all he can prove at this level. He's the best receiver to ever play at Carolina. The ease at which he creates separation at receiver is next level stuff. Drake May is going to win the conference's player of the year in a landslide, but second place should go to Josh Downs. In UNC's six ACC games, Josh Downs has 60 catches, 737 yards, and seven touchdowns. Against single coverage man-to-man, he has an elite grade of 95.3, which is the best in the country, and he also leads the country in yards per game in conference play. He's going to make some GM look really, really good when they use a pick on it. I played wide receiver, so I might have extra appreciation for his game, because of how smooth he makes his routes look. It looks effortless at this point for him. The defense is winning games. Vipple is. Against my better judgment, I'm going to say this is true, but it's almost unexplainable. How can a defense that is 124th in total defense, 119th in yards per play allowed, and 109th in scoring defense be winning you games? It's the proverb, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink, except in this scenario, Drake May is leading the defense to the water, and the defense is drinking up like last call at a bar. Look at the results. App State, Noah Taylor makes a huge play to stop a two-point try on the one-yard line. Miami, Cedric Ray forces a fumble late, and DeAndre Boykin seals it with an interception. Duke, the defense holds in the red zone, forcing a field goal attempt. Drake May takes the lead, and then Will Hardy ends the game on an interception. Pittsburgh, they come out of the locker room after the break with their hair on fire only allowing seven second half points. Virginia, they need stops. They got stops. And then Wake Forest, they get a shutout in the fourth quarter that included two turnovers on downs and an interception by Cam Kelly. There's a reason why Gene Chizik is 19-3 in conference play 
as a defensive coordinator at UNC. And it's not just because he had Marquise Williams, Mitch Trubisky, and Drake May in those seasons. He's a winner, and he's making these players winners with a no-panic, trust-the-process mentality. And that concludes the hottest game show sweeping the country, Vipal is or Vipal isn't. A quick ad break to keep the lights on around here because somebody has to pay the bills. And when we're back, Algie Crumpler. Joining me now, some people might know him as a part of my favorite Madden team of all time from the Atlanta Falcons, from that Madden 04 I always played on the GameCube. However, around here, he, he's better known as a Tar Heel legend. It's Algie Crumpler, three-time first-team All-ACC for the Tar Heels. Algie, appreciate you getting on here. North Carolina beats Wake Forest. It's it's never easy with this team. They take everybody through a roller coaster of emotions, but the team finds another way to win this game, 36 to 34. What were your takeaways from that game? Taylor, I appreciate you having me on, man. Uh, this is pretty cool. I've been following you for a long time, man. So uh, glad to be able to connect with you. Um, the Hills, the cardiac Hills, man. <laughs> Seems like every week it's the... It's the same story, man, but I love the outcome. The guys continue to fight. Uh, they find ways to, to come together and, and, and find a way to win the game. And and at this point, man, I'm just like the late Al Davis, man. Just win, baby. That's all I care about right now. <laughs> just win the game. Uh, just just keep all, all the fans excited and, and find a way to get it done. Yeah, I see some fans on the Inside Carolina message boards. You know, some are bickering back and forth. The defense doesn't look that good. The team is nine and one. We're we're inching closer to a top ten team by the day. Um, as as you transition from a player to a fan, what are you like on game days with emotions? Because I feel like the nerves go up when you aren't factoring into being able to control the outcome of a game. Uh, sometimes I just have to put my phone down. Uh... And then sometimes I get a little envious, man. This offense that Phil Phil Longo's running is is it's explosive, man. And and I would love to be in that rotation, that tight end rotation that John Lilly has uh, out there with Copenhaver and 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 the crew, Kamari and and uh, Nesbitt. You know those guys are are making big plays. But yeah, I'm on edge. Uh, I I know it's gonna go down to the wire, uh, but. <laughs> It, it just feels a, it feels a little different. You know, the Virginia Tech game, they brought our 97 team back that went 11 and one and uh, completely different feel, man. It was like we were we were OK on offense, but our defense was the best defense in the country. And now it's like our offense is like one of the best offenses in the country. And our defense is struggling a little bit, but they had not lost the guys. Uh, they've had some times and some moments where they've gotten better. And how about a big defensive takeaway uh, late at the Wake Forest game that that helped us put it away? You mentioned being envious of uh, this offense. What do you think you would have done if if we could have put you on this team? You know, what what kind of stat line are are you expecting? First thing I would have had to do is is get with uh, the nutritionist and <laughs> and find a way to lose some weight. Uh, I was a two hundred and seventy pound tight end. Uh, at Carolina, and I can promise you Nesbitt's not 270 <laughs> no. pounds, so I probably had to drop about 20 pounds so I could keep up with that fast-paced offense, uh, but I think I could have done some things. And you you mentioned the, the three-headed monster attack that North Carolina has at tight end. Bryson Nesbitt, he, he's finally healthy. It's his first catch yesterday or Saturday when people are listening to this. Um, since that Duke came, you have somebody like Kendry Morale, um, Kamari Morales, who is a, a magnet anytime that team is in the red zone. Uh, four touchdowns on the season with him. John Copenhaver has kind of come on strong. What do you like about the, the tight ends that Carolina has because they're almost an underrated part of this offense with Drake May and Josh Downs and Antoine Green and how they all kind of balance each other out with what they're good at and where they really excel. Well, what I like about the offense with the tight end rotation is you can put all of those guys on the field at any given moment and continue to run your offense. You can't just key in on one particular thing and for a young quarterback like Drake, you need somebody that can control the middle of the field uh, because you've got those monsters like Antoine Green and 
and Josh Downs on the outside that are going to continuously make plays. And, you know, as we get into the ACC championship game, I know we got two games left before we get there. Um, you know, a, a team like Clemson is going to key in on, on Josh Downs. Now, I don't think anybody can cover Josh Downs one-on-one, -on -one, but when you get a, a balanced attack, it, it makes it more fun for our offense to be able to go out there and find creative ways to get the ball in, in all of the guys' hands. We just need everybody to step up and continue to, to build their level of play. Yeah, this offense is is fun to watch. It's almost surprising when when they do get stopped at this point. Um, you played for Mac Brown his first go around in Chapel Hill. What was it like playing for Mac Brown? Uh, it was great. Um, I was heavily recruited in the state, and uh, I think it was widely known that I was going to go to East Carolina because my dad and brother played there. But Mac was very intentional in his recruiting of me and I was able to get to a football camp and I was more of a defensive player, but as we were running around on those seven on sevens, I was making plays and, you know, he sat me down and Tim Brewster at the time sat me down and we're like, look, we think you could do some special things uh, on the offensive side of the ball. So uh, the light bulb went off on my head. I was like, Hey, everybody's telling me defense, but you know, this, this is the cream of the crop right here at home. Maybe I could play some offense. And I came in and, and I had a chance to learn behind, uh, Freddie Davis and and Ebenezer Ekubon and kind of learn how to be a good football player before I developed into a good football player. And I think um, that was the key. I learned how to play football and I developed. And when you look at this team, I look at guys like Elijah Green, you know, who came in, it, it was widely known that he wasn't catching the football well. Uh, he was very deep in the depth chart, but you know, I know his dad well, Victor Green, and I know Victor had a, a, a unconventional path to the NFL, you know, going to a community college and playing, and he knew what the grind was like. Probably instilled that in his son, and when I watched him out there, he kind of looked like that basketball Iron Five team, you know, just keep giving him the rock, giving him the yeah. rock, giving him the rock, <laughs> and, and he's making plays. And then Antoine Green, you know, uh, he's an older guy in the offense, but his, you know, you weren't talking about him the last couple of years. And then now he's stepping up and making big plays. So I think if guys are willing to want to be coached, want to be developed, want to be here, uh, they'll blossom into some very fine players like the guys that I just mentioned. And you, you've you been around the team since Mac Brown has come back. I, I remember one picture that Mac posted where you came and spoke to the team. In those moments when you've gotten the chance to go back, do you, do you notice any anything different about Mac from the first time when, when he was your coach? Uh, you know, the, the funny thing is when I spoke to the team, I, I spoke in terms of the things that I remembered. And when I spoke of those things, you know, the room lit up because they're hearing that same message, you know, when the opener, that's important. <laughs> you know, you need to, you need to get off to a, a, a good start. Um, you know, put a fence around the state. You know, the top guys in the state weren't leaving to go to other schools when I was playing. And, you know, now guys have more opportunities to go different places. But, you know, to keep a guy like Drake May at home, Sam Howell at home, uh, it's important that the best in North Carolina come to North Carolina. And then, um, you know, when we win, we're going to have fun. And who has more fun than Mac Brown dancing in the locker room uh, after a game? I wish he danced when he was a little younger with us. <laughs> but it's fun to see him him dancing now uh, and enjoying these victories because they're hard to come by. Yeah, I think that's one thing that fans kind of underestimate that I think whenever I have a former player on, we always try to stress like winning and winning in college football is especially hard. And then you add in winning on the road in like conference play for this team to be six and oh on the road this season. First time in school history that that's a, a feat in and of itself. Um what has it been like for you to to see somebody that you care about in Mac Brown come back to Chapel Hill, have success, and and have those moments in the locker room, like on Saturday night, where where the team is partying in the locker room, celebrating with that Coastal Championship? Uh, it's special. Uh, I should have shot Coach a message. I didn't uh, because I know there's more work to be done. But you know, it, it's special when guys can can win and and make. Because that's why coach came back he wanted to be around us 
uh, him and Miss Sally wanted to be around the guys and wanted to continue this thing and, and make it special. And I think now going into his fourth year to finally make it to an ACC championship game, that's important. Winning's important. I've, I've always known uh, for Coach Brown that winning uh, was key and winning was important and doing it the right way. And um, when we lose, I get mad, but I know coach gets mad. Our donors get mad. Our, our, our staff get mad. Uh, our former players, a group chat that we have, everybody's mad. But, you know, when, when, we're, when we're winning, you know, it's who, who's, who's going to buy the suite for the championship game? Who's going to get the tickets? Who's going to throw the tailgate? You know, those are fun conversations to have. Yeah, I think that's a side that fans definitely don't see the the Mac Brown that gets mad. I or or even the Mac Brown that that's in the locker room I think is different than the one that fans hear in in press conferences. I know in the hype video for the Wake Forest game, I don't know if you saw it on social media, but it was it was like a, a snippet of Mac Brown addressing the team in the locker room from the week before and you know, he's fired up. He he's he's dropping curse words and you're like it was jarring, but you you love to hear that side of him because a lot of the times I think a narrative gets pushed about him that you know he he's coming back to coast or before he before this this season particularly that he was coming back to coast he might not be all in but you know despite his age he still loves coaching and he's he's as competitive as ever I think um, but one of the biggest reasons for North Carolina being nine and one. I, I've been on this train as early as possible. I'm inviting you on the train, the Drake May to New York, Drake May Heisman campaign. Uh, he's third in the country in yards. He's tied for first in touchdowns, uh, passing touchdowns. He's fourth in QBR. He leads the country in total touchdowns. When you look at the pro football focus grades, Drake May, best quarterback in the country. What have you seen from Drake May as somebody who – did play in the NFL and and played with some great quarterbacks. And now, now the expectation is Drake may going to be the first quarterback taken, not this upcoming draft because he's not eligible, but the next one in 2024. I think the thing that impresses me the most is he's a, uh, he, he's a closer, he's a finisher. And, and those are the things that that's, it's hard to teach. You know, when you get into the red zone, you pretty much know that Carolina is going to put points on the board except for when you get stopped on the goal line, like we did at Wake Forest early. But, you know, we're going to put points on the board and and uh, make plays. And and I love his confidence. And I hate the Air Drake name. I, I don't want him jumping no. over anybody anymore. <laughs> uh, but I, I love his confidence. I love his poise. I love the fun that he has uh, with the guys in the locker room. I love the digs at NC State, even though Coach made him apologize. You know, I love I love all of the intangibles that this young guy brings uh, to the team. And for and for the most part, the thing that I think about the most is um, as, a, as a university, as, in terms of football, we've always had spurts where we're successful. It's how can we handle success? And I think last year, as frustrating as it was for Coach Brown, uh, the fan base, for me, all the teammates, uh, we didn't handle success well. And I think, you know, being humbled last year allows us to continue to build on that success now. And I think Drake, when he's out there, he, he's not thinking about all that. He's like, look, let me get the ball to Josh. Let me hand the ball off to Elijah. Let's just go win this game and, and let everything else take care of itself. And I think that's the best attitude to have and it's showing on the field. Yeah, I think he's he's proven he he's the best quarterback in the country. Um, for for what he's done to get this team to nine and one, and it helps having somebody like Josh Downs. Josh Downs missed two games this season, but he already has 847 yards, three touchdowns in the game against Wake Forest. He had a pretty cool celebration with the the one two three count when he he got his third before getting full body cramps. Had to go back in the locker room get an IV. What's your opinions on Josh Downs and and kind of what makes him special? I've watched, I live in the North Gwinnett School District where my oldest graduated from high school last year. And, and uh, so I've been able to watch Josh in high school play, watch him win a state championship, 
uh, watched him in the 707s, just knowing he was a special player and was excited that um, Bly and Coach Mack were able to get him to North Carolina because I knew he would be a, a special player. Um, nothing he's doing surprises me because he's always been an ankle breaker. Uh, he's always been a guy that can high point the ball given his size and, and make plays. And he's hungry. He has an edge. He has a chip on his shoulder. Uh, a lot of people don't see that because all he's doing is scoring touchdowns and celebrating. But, you know, he, he's hungry when he's out there at practice every day. And and uh doesn't matter who you put in front of him. He's going he's gonna to make the play. So I, I love everything that Josh is, is bringing to the table. And I knew, you know, with his parents, I played with his dad, Gary, in Atlanta. Um, they've raised him right. They've got a fantastic family. Uh, I, I knew he'd be special. This team, 9-1 overall, 6-0 on the road, uh, undefeated in conference play. They're, they're winning the, these one-score games. Uh, you, you mentioned them being the cardiac heels, um, but they are finding plays to win the game. Even, even there's, there's no panic in this team. There's no quit in this team. What do you think that kind of says about this team and, and the direction of the program under Mac Brown? Why not us? Um, why not us? You know, everybody crowned us last year and then we kind of fell apart. Um, and I couldn't tell you what those reasons are, but um, it was a rough start to the season, but we were finding ways to win. And it just seems like other than the Virginia Tech and maybe pick game, you know, every game has come down to the wire. Um, they're just a special group of guys. And as long as they continue to believe in each other and, and just, uh, try to get better each and every week. It's tough when guys are banged up and nicked up late in the season to get better. But, you know, I saw some things when I was watching that Wake Forest game. We were aggressive on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, zero blitz, um, just mixing up coverages, doing things. They just, they were just not getting there. Uh, and and that takes time. You know, they're in the first year defensive scheme and I and I'm, played against teams that were close, but just not there yet. So I'm seeing signs of some things they could do. You know, if we can get some edge rushers in recruiting, guys that can just dominate the line of scrimmage and get to the quarterback um, and, and our back end gets a little bit better, I think we'll be okay. Is the is the suite booked for, for Charlotte? It, it's not booked for Charlotte, but I – I will be in Charlotte, but based on the <laughs> amount of text messages that I've gotten in the past 24 hours, you'd think I've got five suites because everybody's <laughs> trying to get some tickets uh, for this game, but I'll, I'll be there. Uh, I'm excited about being there. Uh, hopefully it's a better outcome than the last time I was in Charlotte during that South Carolina game um, for the bowl game. But I know that, um, you know, there's great energy around this team, uh, especially at night games. So it should be fun. Two regular season games left for North Carolina and then the ACC championship against Clemson. As long as North Carolina has Drake May, I am going to continue to pick North Carolina in these games. I, I like their chances as long as they have uh, Drake at quarterback. But, Algie, appreciate the time. Appreciate everybody listening. And talk again next week. Let me try my Russell Wilson. Go Heels. <laughs> Perfect. See you, man. <laughs>